high atop one of the hills which ring the teeming metropolis of Gotham City, a large house rears its bulk against the dark sky. Outwardly, there's nothing to distinguish this house from many others. But deep in the cavernous basements of this house, in a chamber hewn from the living rock of the mountain, is the strange, dimly lighted, mysteriously secret Bat's Cave, hidden headquarters of America's number one crime fighter, Batman. Yes, Batman, clad in the somber costume which has struck terror to the heart of many a swaggering denizen of the underworld. Batman, who even now is pondering the plans of a new assault against the forces of crime. A crushing blow against evil in which he will have the valuable aid of his young, two-fisted assistant, Robin the Boy Wonder. They represent American youth who love their country and are glad to fight for it. Wherever crime raises its ugly head to strike with the venom of a maddened rattlesnake, Batman and Robin strike also. And in this very hour when the Axis criminals are spreading their evil over the world, even within our own land, Batman and Robin stand ready to fight them to the death. These boxes are usually locked. I know it. Captain Arnold, please. Captain Arnold speaking. I have a nice little package for you. You'll find it at the corner of First and Maple. Heavenly. Yeah, what's doing, Captain? It's the Batman again. He's at the corner of First and Maple. This time I'm going with you. Calling car 67. 67. That's us. Go to First and Maple. A702. I'm warning you, Dr. Decker will make you regret this. Shut up! Dr. Decker? Who's that? Never mind. You'll find out. Let's wait around and see Captain Arnold's face when he gets here. No time for that. Don't forget, I've got a date. Let's go. You'll recognize these as the last two men of the Collins gang. I know you've been looking for them for some time. The Batman. P.S. The keys to the handcuffs are in this one's pocket. Well, it looks as though the Batman has done you boys another favor. Yeah. You ought to put him on a force. You find him. I'll put him on. Come in. Hello, Linda. Hello. I'm just finishing up. I won't be a minute. Oh, no, hurry. I'll just relax a moment. It may settle my nerves. Listen, will you keep your hands out of there? You've had your usual busy day, I suppose. Yep. Up at the crack of noon, a brisk walk to the corner, and then the club for a rugged afternoon of gin rummy. Maybe you'll be too tired to go with me tomorrow to meet Uncle Martin. No, oh, no, I'll be right with you. Thanks. Oh, it'll mean so much to him to know that he still has his friends despite all that trouble he was in. Only do me a favor. Let's not start too early. I'm always tired in the morning. All right. You're liable to carry that masquerade too far. Think so? Yes, I do. Why don't you let her know who you really are instead of letting her think you're just a good-for-nothing playboy? Well, if she knew I was the Batman, she might worry. Not that she cares anything about me. Besides, on account of our special assignment from Uncle Sam, our success depends on keeping our identity a secret. And suppose she asks you about your status in the Army? Well, I always tell her I'm a 4F. That was fast. Well, I don't keep people waiting like someone I know. Captured Colin Gang. Extra, extra. Hey, boy, paper. Oh. Extra. The Batman is certainly marvelous, isn't he? Oh, I think he's a show off. 
Oh, everybody that does anything is a show off to you. I can do things, too. I'll show you. I'll call for you tomorrow and take you to meet your uncle, no matter how early you want to leave, even if it's before noon. It's nice of you to make such a terrific sacrifice on my account. That looks like Warren. Yeah, that's him. My old cellmate. Hi, Marty, old boy. Why, hello, Foster. I, I don't... Uh, I know. You didn't think your old pal would remember you, did you? Well, I'm expecting my niece to pick me your up. Your niece? Oh, sure, I know. That's what we came to tell you. She couldn't make it. We're going to take you to her. Come on. Like my niece in that car. You're seeing things, Marty. Stop the car! Pipe down, Marty. You're going with us. Now sit back and relax. Why? Why, what do you want from me? You'll find out soon enough. Has uh, Mr. Warren left already? Yes, ma'am. Two men met him and they drove off in the black sedan. Uh, thank you. He drove away with some men in that black sedan we passed back on the road. Well, get in. We'll catch him before he gets back to town. Get going, Alfred. Then he got top. I can't understand why Uncle Martin didn't wait for us. Hey, big car with a demon is right back of us. Step on it. We'll see if they're tailing us. They're speeding up, sir. Drive a little faster, Alfred. They're trying to lose us. I have a strange feeling that Uncle Martin is in some kind of trouble. They're gaining on us. Can't you get any more speed out of this jalopy? Do you think we can catch them? Sure, but I hope we catch them before some speed cop catches us. They're out of sight. Release the gas and make the change. I think I'm going to turn around. Here they come. Get down. They passed. Didn't give us a tumble. Well, let them try to figure that one out. They've disappeared, sir. No side roads. They just seem to have vanished. Well, Linda, I guess your uncle wasn't interested in seeing us. I can't understand his actions. Well, I guess the only thing to do is to go back to the hospital and wait for him to phone me. Yeah, and find out how he did that disappearing act. I'd like to pull it sometime when my creditors are after me. This was part of a foreign land transplanted bodily to America and known as Little Tokyo. Since a wise government rounded up the shifty-eyed Japs, it has become virtually a ghost street where only one business survives, eking out a precarious existence on the dimes of curiosity seekers. Now, this exhibit, my friend, was created by artists that know. Artists who have created some of the finest wax exhibits in all of England and France. Now, the price of admission is only 10 cents, uh, plus one cent tax per Uncle Sam. Not going to have any trouble with you, Marty, are we? Now you're being smart. It's, uh, it's educational. All right, gentlemen, right up these steps. And if when you come out, you don't face the greatest exhibit you ever saw, I'll refund your money. All right, folks, who's next? Just a minute, folks. I know you two want to ride low.
fine, Monty. 